Outdoors Delmarva covers everything outdoors. Including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We do our best each and every week to keep it tasteful, but discretion is advised. Now, enjoy the show. This week on Outdoors Delmarva. It's a shooter's delight as we head out on the range for some long-range rifle action. See just how accurate these sharpshooters can be. Then we'll join some youngsters vying for a spot in a bigger fishing tournament down the road. But how this competition stays all about the fun. And deer hunters aren't the only patches of orange you'll see in the local fields this time of year. We have an eagle's eye view of Delmarva's vast pumpkin harvest. Plus your viewer photos and we'll announce the winner of this Bushnell trophy cam from Gander Mountain. Right now on Outdoors Delmarva. Hi everybody and welcome again to Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. And I'm Captain Willie Dykes. We're happy you could be with us. And another big show lined up this week, Willie, and almost immediately our attention is turning to deer hunting again. And for good reason, both Delaware and Maryland are right now in the midst of those early muzzleloader seasons. In other words, some more gunshots being heard out there. Yeah, more than just one or two down my way in southern Worcester County, Mike. And from what we've been seeing, there's some really nice bucks out there. Just check out this video from a butcher shop we visited this week in Del Mar. And they say they expect business to pick up even more when the weather gets a little cooler. And you know what they say, Willie, a healthy harvest means a healthy herd. Plus, not a bad idea to fill that freezer here before winter. You bet, Mike. But you know, that's just the hunters. Recently, you spent time with another group of sharpshooters who don't have to wait on the weather. That's right, Mike. And you know just about everyone who owns a rifle like my little sweetie here, has a story about a long-range shot they made at one time or another. Well, let's take a look at some folks who regularly shoot at ranges over one-third of a mile. The Bridgeville Rifle and Pistol Club has the space to test the limits of marksmanship. The club's facility is on 138 acres outside Bridgeville, and they need every inch of it. Okay, we're gonna get ready to go. All right, relay two to the firing line. The 600-yard shooters are here today for a match. Two main classes of riflemen are competing. The F class uses telescopic sights, and the rest of the competitors are using open or iron sights. That should be in the paper. Went down. The rifles are specially designed and custom made for the sport and may cost $5,000 or more. So these are all full metal jacket. Yeah. Full metal jacket. Yeah. Boot tailed or? It's a hollow point. Any cartridge up to 35 caliber is allowed and the connection between the eyeball and the trigger finger is about all these marksmen have in common. As with any extreme sport, having the right equipment is a big part of the game. The ammunition is loaded with a jeweler's precision, and high-quality optics are necessary to keep track of scoring. It does feel uh, steadier when now this is a 30 caliber. The jackets that are worn by all the shooters are not for fashion. They're a cross between a straight jacket and body armor. They help to keep the body rigid and even help to regulate breathing and pulse for consistent shooting. The jackets are worn all year, even in the heat of August. Shooters from North Carolina to Maine come here for the matches that are held several times a year, and this club boasts a national champion. This match calls for 20 shots in 20 minutes. The bullets make it down this range in parts of seconds, so we're going to check and see how long it takes to ride it uh, in a pickup truck. I understand. We're just passing the halfway point right now at 300 yards. It's about a two minute ride from the rifle line down to the pits here. So let's get out and see what the targets look like. For safety and accurate scoring, the pits have to be orderly and disciplined. Okay, the pits are sealed, the pits are sealed. Pit boss Dick Wazalis keeps things moving. He has quite a crew. Good. 
hear that crack and then it's followed later by a thump and if you really keep your wits about you you count the time between the snap and the thump you can tell how far away the guy is this is matching the pit workers place the colored disc to indicate the numerical score and the white disc to show the actual bullet placement after every shot this guy can shoot the F-class shooters with the telescopic sights have a three-inch bullseye to aim at, and that's all you need if you're really good. Okay. Can you get a picture of that? That's the perfect that's score clean. with 15 X's. This Bridgeville Club's 500 members do all kinds of competition and recreational rifle and pistol shooting but they're adding to their long-range reputation by building a thousand-yard range right next to their 600-yarder. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, we'll do some bridge fishing with some young anglers on the Choptank River. See why they're reeling for a reason. Plus, I'll take you along in Chopper 16 for a look at this colorful fall harvest. But first, did you know what is the largest caliber bullet allowed in long-range shooting competition? The answer when we come back. Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Frostrum Subaru, Lewis Harbor Marina, and Diamond State Pole Buildings. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. Did you know the largest caliber bullet allowed in long range shooting competition is 35 caliber? Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. You know, a lot of people would describe the fall fishing seasons as big and interesting with the return of large stripers, catching togs out of the rocks, and things are a little bit more interesting if you're fishing out there off the surf. But for some local kids, well, they didn't have to catch anything huge to earn a huge opportunity. It was the vision of one man, Bill Burton. The late legendary Maryland outdoor rider wanted to preserve this old bridge across the chop tank as a permanent fishing place. Tell me what you like about fishing. Uh, I like to wheel fish in. Oh, look at that one, bring him over. It's fitting then that this pier on the Talbot County side of the river played host to the kickoff of the latest Maryland fishing challenge. We got all the random stuff that I couldn't find a place for. We got all the weights, the hooks, the jig heads, we got all the artificials. This kids event is a fishing rodeo, one of dozens that will be held between this fall and next summer all across the state, where youngsters earn a chance to compete in the final tournament where big prizes are on the line. In fact, this year, a 13-year-old girl who caught us a, a Citation white perch won a boat donated by Bass Pro Shops and Tracker, uh, Tracker Boats, so it's a pretty big deal. 13-year-old kid, brand new boat. You have to put bait on. If you really need gear, you can put that on too. I think I might, caught, might have caught something. Yeah! I got an eye. Uh-huh, I got a spot. Come on, buddy. The Maryland Fishing Challenge itself is billed as the largest fishing tournament in the world, and it's free. Combining the rodeo events like this. This is really fun. I'm surprised, but... And also the chance for anyone who fishes the Chesapeake Bay and its tributaries to catch a number of specially tagged prize fish released into public yeah. waters. But for the kids here... Go on! Fish on! It's just a lot of fun. I'm caught on a toadfish, that's a real ugly fish, a white perch, and a cod. You probably won't have any more fun than when you're helping a kid catch a fish. It's definitely more rewarding than catching your own fish and to see the joy in their faces and the excitement they get from uh, succeeding at catching a nice fish. At the Bill Burton event, it's more about quantity than quality. Simply put, the biggest fish doesn't win, but every fish caught does earn a ticket, which puts the kids in the running for small prizes like bait and tackle 
and also the chance to move on to the bigger tournament next year. Catch and fish. For everyone involved, the experience is what makes the day. Reeling in fish, memories, mm -hmm. and the beauty that one man envisioned and countless others are making real. Probably the most important thing we can do as adults, and particularly as uh, uh, members of the Department of Natural Resources and the fishing community, is introduce our kids to fishing, because these are the stewards for tomorrow. And to learn more about the Maryland Fishing Challenge and to find upcoming kids fishing rodeos near you, go to OutdoorsDelmarva.com. And while you're there, make sure to upload some of your own outdoor videos and pictures. We'd be happy to use them here on the air. Still to come on Outdoors Del Marva, we'll announce the winner of this Bushnell Trophy Cam from Gander Mountain. Will it be you? But first, Captain Willie's back with an eagle's eye view of Del Marva's fall harvest. Stay with us. Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. You know, if your family goes out to look for a pumpkin this time of year, Del Marva is what they call a target rich environment. Let's take a look. Little patches on family farms like this one near Laurel supply roadside stands that also give you a chance to pick out exactly what you have in mind. Pumpkins are big business here as well, and harvest time means hard work. It's just about all done by hand, and here's how it goes. First, they're sorted and placed in rows. The fellow in blue there has to be a star on the soccer field since he practices his dribbling all day at work. The carving models get special attention. The harvesters only want to handle them once, so they get a quick check and a wipe, and sometimes even a price sticker right in the field before they go into the box. These days, when a lot of our produce comes from far, far away, it's good to know that you might find a pumpkin on Del Marva that's never crossed a county line. See you on the ground, Mike. Hey, thanks, Willie. Well, you know, some things just never change. And when it comes to our pristine natural surroundings, the status quo is just fine by me. And the same went for Scorchy Taws, who back in 1994 spent a day in one of the wildest parts of Delaware. Today, let us take you on a tour of one of Del Marva's best kept secrets and the state of Delaware's last wild frontier. It's been called the burnt swamp because a lot of times fires would go through here before they had fire control. It's been called the gum swamp because of the trees there. And it's been called the cedar swamp and it's been called the cypress swamp. By any name, the swamp is special to Babe Gum of Dagsboro. It's an 11,000 acre tract of pristine paradise that reposes on the doorsteps of Gumboro, Frankfort, and Selbyville, deep in southern Sussex County. Babe and Charlie West of Gumboro were our tour guides through this primitive Eden only scant miles removed from the tumult of the coastal resorts in distance, but light years away in the realm of peace and tranquility. Here one can hike, bike, ride, horseback, bird watch, or simply commune with nature on its 30 miles of trails amid stands of cypress, gum, cedar, pine, maple, and oak. It's a place where only the whisper of the wind and the muted voices of wildlife disturb the stillness. Cypress Swamp is not public domain, which in itself is a virtue. It is owned by Delaware Wildlands, a private nonprofit conservation organization. Its overseer is the 200-member Burnt Swamp Sportsmen's Association, a group who willingly share it with those who would treat it with respect, those who would leave nothing behind but their footprints. This was a day of nostalgia for Babe Gum, the man who embraced the swamp as a lad and whose love for it has never waned in over three quarters of a century. It's very dear to my heart, it certainly is. If I had my way, I'd love to have a home right in the middle of it. Scorchy Toes, wandering our Del Marvelous land for WBOC News. Still ahead on Outdoors Del Marva, another visit from the area's premier nature photographer, the world of ducks through the lens of Kevin Fleming. But first, did you know the spot has been known to live up to five years in the wild, but rarely lives beyond three due to its high predation rate. Did You Know is brought to you by Taws Marine Insurance.
Hey, thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker, and I'm excited today to be visiting one of the fine sponsors of our show, talking about Lewis Harbor Marina, a true fishing and boating outfitter here in beautiful Lewis, Delaware. Let's take a look around. Aha, and just the guy I wanted to see, Joe Morris, owner of Lewis Harbor Marina. Joe, you run the shop here, and I see your loads of mice right now into the cooler. Yeah, Mike, uh, man, we went through a lot of this stuff this summer. It was a hot year for sure. And I know that you want to help people get out there and be successful. Oh, yeah, absolutely. For uh, boaters and fishermen. So uh, I'll be glad to show you around. All right, let's take a look. Cool. All right, Joe, what do we have here? Uh, this is our cold storage facility. It allows us to keep a good selection of uh, fresh and frozen baits on hand at all times. Uh, look at this. What do we have here? Green crabs. Uh, it's hog season, and those are really good tog baits, so we keep them around all during the fall. Let me tell you something. That is some fresh bait. <laughs> but the live stuff, that's just one side of the business. You guys have a heck of a tackle shop inside. Yep, we do, uh, and Amanda's waiting for us. All right, let's go check it out. Hey, there she is right now. Hello. Nice to see you again. I just picked out one, two, three, a thousand things I think I could walk out of here with today. Okay, these are MasterCard Discover. <laughs> very, cash. very funny, but you know the one thing about fishing and boating? It's worth every penny. So we've got all the popular baits, like the gulps over here. Yes. Hundreds of fishing mm -hmm. rods, lines and leaders, mm -hmm. and Amanda. And that's just the fishing stuff. But this time of year, you also got to be worried about your boat. We're talking about winterizing. It's a big deal. Back here with Joe. Joe, how can you help folks here at Lewis Harbor Marine? Uh, some things you want to consider are antifreeze uh, and stabilizers for the fuel to make sure that your boat is ready to go in the spring when you want to use it again. And if you need more proof, take a look at these pictures of Joe and Amanda. I would say they definitely know they're boating and fishing. Great service and great products. Come on into Lewis Harbor Marina and you'll be another satisfied customer. Thanks, Mike. It's time now to announce the winner of our latest product giveaway from Gander Mountain. Here's one last look at what's up for grabs this week. This Bushnell Trophy Cam will keep tabs on your favorite hunting spot, even when you can't be there. The camera is small, lightweight, and conceals very easily on trees. With no visible flash, you'll be less likely to spook big game as it passes by the wide-range infrared sensor. And the built-in LED screen allows you to view your pictures right in the field. The Bushnell Trophy Cam retails for $229.99 at Gander Mountain in Salisbury. Mike, here's just what you need to find out who's on those deer trails when you're not watching. I always seem to see the big ones and never see them during the season. <laughs> All right, let's spin this around and pick a winner. How many postcards would you say we got this week, Willie? We have postcards on top of postcards <laughs> in there. That's one way to stay vague. Go ahead, Willie. Okay, let me mix them up a little bit in here and get around to the corner. All right. Here we have one from a friend's postcard. And this is from Casher Shockley III from Seaford. Congratulations there, Casher. You have a trail camera. To enter to win future product giveaways featured on Outdoors Del Marva, send a postcard with your name, address, and phone number to Outdoors Del Marva, care of WBOC TV, 1729 North Salisbury Boulevard, Salisbury, Maryland, 21801. Stay with us. Your viewer photos are still to come. Outdoors Del Marva viewer photos are brought to you by Branchy's Gun Shop. Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Frostrum Subaru, Lewis Harbor Marina, and Diamond State Pole Buildings. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. And I'm Captain Willie Dykes. Well, you know, Willie, they're majestic, they're loud, and often the subject of an artist's work, just like these old decoys that we normally keep up there on the mantel. And Mike, over the years, photographer Kevin Fleming has had many magnificent encounters with ducks and has this week's Wild Del Marva. I grew up on a pond in Kent County, Delaware, and we had ducks, so they're one of my favorite subjects. Well, this is in the winter. This is a Prime Hook National Wildlife Refuge, and it's one of those times when you're able to get pretty close to the mallards that are there. So a combination of getting the shutter speed just right so that you can get some blur in the wings, at a high enough shutter speed so you can stop the action. It's the kind of picture you don't get two shots at. 
This is a uh, buffalo head taking off and he is indeed walking on water. They don't take the spring straight up in the air like the mallards do and the pintails. This guy has to start running on the water to take off. This is down at Assateague National Wildlife Refuge and it's one of the better places to get close to these ducks. It's a male northern pintail on the left and a female northern pintail on the right and they are about to fight over a little tiny bit of open water. Sure enough, the female grabbed a hold of the male pintail to, to keep him away from the spot of open water, and I was able to catch this moment as she got a hold of his feathers. This is one of my favorite photographs. This is absolutely at sunset. The pintail flock took off into what little tiny bit of light there was left, and I was able to, to catch them just as they took off. One of those magical moments, you can shoot ducks a lot, and this doesn't happen very often. You can go to many of the wildlife refuges, state and national parks, Federal wildlife refuges like Assateague Island is a great place to go. Certainly Blackwater, Bombay Hook, and Prime Hook in Delaware. Simply beautiful. Thank you, Kevin. And now it's time to share some of the photos sent in by our own Outdoors Delmarva viewers. This first photo shows Jeff Herbster of Newark, Delaware. He caught this beauty of a flounder near the Indian River Inlet. Thanks to Julia Class of Ocean View for sending in this shot. Always neat to see one of these guys hanging around. Jesse Wedman from Reliance, Maryland, spotted this pelated woodpecker out on a tree. Looks like he's digging in there, Willie, looking for a meal. And Sonny Kinzer from Dagsboro caught this hefty tog while fishing off Indian River Inlet earlier this month. Yeah, that's a nice one, a 15-incher. We love sharing your outdoor photos, and you can now upload them directly to OutdoorsDelmarva.com using Flickr or you can just email me at mparker at wboc.com. Well, Mike, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to get the itch to get out in the woods. Yeah, you could say that again. Also, one more thing, Willie, here. I can get rid of this duck. I wanted to show you something else. Check this out. I want to say thanks to our viewers, D. Renshaw and Michelle Trivets in Salisbury, who carved up this nice outdoors Delmarva pumpkin for us. Wow, what a beautiful It's job. all right, though. See, it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those foam jobs. But you know what? It's beautiful. We're going to keep it up here on the mantle. We'll see it next week. Wow, that's as good as it gets, Mike. <laughs> uh, for Mike Parker, I'm Captain Willie Dykes, reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva. Marva.